Uh, I think Canada's decision to build ships in Vancouver and Halifax through NSPS was a good, timely, and courageous decision by the federal government. It's good because as a maritime nation, it's important to Canada to have a strong shipbuilding and marine sector to support its security and sovereign interests. It's timely because there is a need to renew key assets in both the Canadian Coast Guard and the Royal Canadian Navy. It's courageous because the government's decision was not without its public detractors who claimed that it would be cheaper to build vessels for the Canadian Coast Guard and the Royal Canadian Navy through allegedly more productive offshore shipyards. As a director of engineering for Sysman Shipyards in Vancouver, and with 40 years of shipbuilding experience in a leadership capacity in South Korea, I'm proud to be working at CISPAN and helping to bridge Canada's maritime capability gaps, and by doing so, helping to rebuild Canada's marine industrial base. My presentation today, however, will be less on what we will be producing for the Canadian government, but rather on how we can do it with productivity and cost efficiency in mind. First, it would be wrong to me to allow the media's attention to productivity differences between North American and Asian shipyards to go without a com comment. Asian manufacturers typically are producing commercial vessels by the hundreds and mostly with standardized homogeneous designs, which allows them to develop significant economies of scale. Unlike Asian shipyards, C-SPAN, for instance, will be producing vessels for a government customer with much shorter production runs. Three, vessel complex, three very complex vessels for the Canadian Coast Guard, then one vessel of a different variant for the Coast Guard, then two joint support ships for the Royal Canadian Navy, and then one polar icebreaker for the Coast Guard. In short, no room for real efficiency to be gained. This short run, non-standardized design projects make any productivity comparisons with Asian shipyards as discussed in the media, similar to discussing the differences between apples and oranges. Here, productivity differences between Asian and North American manufacturers are more relevant, in my view, and where shipbuilders in Canada can make significant productivity advances is in the engineering, more specifically in the adoption of design for production, lean design, and outfitting, outfit planning. Let me explain why I believe this to be the case for each via the following il illustrations in the following slides. The drawing is quite small. I, I, I'm worried that you could see this. I took an example from, uh, from the vessel we are designing at the moment. You could see, when I reviewed the design, and this is the design from our first year partners, you can see uh, this is deck. All the deck plates, eight millimeter thickness, grade A. And outside the shell, 10 millimeter, grade B. Yeah, 10 millimeter, grade B. You can see this is the uh, striking, deck striking. And I modif uh, we modified 
like this. Actually, uh, I joined the C-SPAN last year, uh, August at the time, we finished already the uh, initial part of the design, basic design part already finished, so I could not change fundamental aspect, but later, later part of the functional design, I've changed it. And you could see, it's a very small example. It's not a critical example, but you could see the huge difference easy here. Uh, I've changed, we changed all plate same grade B. And striking, that's striking from this curved line to straight. Now, uh, plate purchasing, handling, management, all become very easy. Actually, two most uh, critical problems we have in, in shipbuilding, shipbuilding engineering is one is design faults, design errors. Second one is design changes. And by designing this, we could fundamentally protect errors. We could apply uh, mistake proofing like this. And also we could reduce uh, sc scrapping or remnants. Actually, the difference is in price between grade A and grade B is less than 10%. But compared with the gains we could have, it's a peanut, in my opinion. This is a similar example. Again, this is striking. Uh, we made it very simple, all grade B, but still there is some difference in thickness. But you could easy, easily imagine that by simply changing this, production will become a lot easier. Somebody who don't have an engineering background could easily understand. There is another example. This is example about producibility. Well, when I observed the, uh, oh, sorry. What happened? This is uh, four by the chain locker section. You could see how could we apply welding and painting there? But the people who designed this did not pay proper attention about that. Because usually, uh, in some design cultures, usually design for product and design for production isolated, separate. So somebody simply produces designs, and somebody take care of design for production. It's totally wrong. We must consider at the same time, like this. Here. Almost impossible to produce or very difficult. We need to put a lot of man hours for that. But here, actually, if I could join from the beginning, I will change her form in the forebody. That's the best way. But it's too late. So I change it structure like this. You could see now construction, welding, painting become a lot easier. I'll show another example. This is the main, uh, machinery arrangement. Actually, we have three different engines. Two sets and three sets. One another a short power generator. And, and this is the example of lean design. We change it like this. You could see the difference, it looks much more simple, much more elegant. Actually, lean design is an elegant way of design. And we, we apply for exactly the same engine, two sets of en same engine. Actually, by applying this lean design, uh, we could apply more commonality. That's good for uh, maintenance afterwards and it's a cheaper and a lot easier to build. And routing for piping, uh, cables, a lot, lot are simpler. And also, 
I would like to talk a little bit about outfitting. Uh, in general, if we could apply pre-outfitting, uh, we could improve productivity. And we could also reduce the time for production. Uh, I would like to uh, make a f summary for, for my idea. Uh, World-class shipyard has a very strong uh, in-house engineering capability. That does not necessarily mean that they are not using uh, partners. They are using a lot of partners. But they are in charge of basic part of the design. That's very important because that's the core of the design. And as you can see, uh, the front part of the design has much more uh, leverage. More than 75% of the costs are related with the first part of the design. So front end loaded design. Uh, usually, uh, in a world-class sh commercial shipyards, put the most experienced designers in the beginning. And they, they work concurrently with other specialists uh, to reduce design force and to reduce design changes. Usually, after the basic design, uh, we could come up with building specifications, make a list, initial cost estimations. Uh, another important uh, takeaway take away is, uh, as uh, uh, also uh, mentioned by a uh, okay, sorry. Uh, before, long-term relationship with suppliers and subcontractors is very important. And limited number of suppliers and subcontractors. And integrated execution of design and procurement. A, a procurement is part of the design. And commercial activities are very, very limited there. And world-class shipbuilders contracting practices they are based on singular contract instead of uh, piecewise contract. Because with piecewise contract, uh, our uh, uh, efforts are evenly distributed. We, we cannot put a lot of efforts in the beginning. And that's the most important part. Oh, that's it. Actually, I, I modified my presentation last moment, but unfortunately, I couldn't change it now. Thank you. Uh, thank you for your kind attention. Of